Hey everybody, really glad to be with you this week. Um, I want to talk with you a couple of, about a couple of things this week. Uh, number one, of course, you know that right now in the House of Commons, I think the I think the voting may be over now, but there's been um, lots and lots of debate about the omnibus bill 38 that the Conservatives have put forward and are ramming through Parliament. This bill affects hundreds of, uh, of um, laws and pieces of policy uh, governing Canadians' lives from EI to old age security to immigration to environmental concerns uh, to the Fisheries Act, all sorts of stuff and it's really a travesty and uh, the opposition has been doing what it can to try to block this uh, but of course without popular support uh, we're going to see the Conservatives keep doing this kind of thing without popular support for fighting back, I mean. Um, in any case, uh, what you probably also know is that uh, along with uh, the omnibus bill on the budget, the Conservatives have been pushing through lots of other legislation, terrible legislation, and one piece of that we've talked about lots on this commentary is uh, Bill C-31. Uh, this is the immigration bill proposed that uh, contains many, many abuses of power by the Minister of Deportation, Jason Kenney. Uh, but one of those abuses is that um, refugees, uh, the revoking of health insurance and health coverage for refugees in this country, and uh, they're going to be facing drastic cuts to their health insurance on June 30th. Um, this means that children will no longer be able to get asthma medications, diabetics no, uh, not able to get insulin, many refugees will no longer have access to health care. And of course, uh, this goes along with many other um, attacks on refugees and immigrants that uh, the Minister of Immigration and Deportation is putting forward, including uh, um, trying to just get rid of a backlog of applicants under the skilled worker programs. Uh, Jason Kenney was challenged on this uh, recently, and I was just reading in the paper this morning uh, that in fact a challenge by 900 immigrants who or uh, potential immigrants who are waiting and have been waiting for years to have applications that they filed in good faith uh, with this country many years ago. Um, they challenged uh, the immigration minister's uh, decision to get rid of that backlog just by a stroke of the pen, basically just saying, well, too bad, we're not going to honor those anymore. Uh, people have fought back and uh, they've been successful. A federal court has said to um, uh, Jason Kenney and the immigration ministry that you cannot just uh, uh, cancel these applications that these were filed in good faith and so you're gonna have to honor those and process those applications so a small victory and congratulations to those folks who challenged them um, but back to the health care piece uh, there are many people I've told you about a vigil that happens every Friday at Dufferin Grove Park from 5 to 6 uh, that's been organized by uh, refugee and settlement organizations we also now have health professionals doctors um, nurses uh, clinicians, all sorts of healthcare professionals are organizing a rally, a National Day of Action for uh, healthcare uh, for refugees, to maintain the, the healthcare for refugees. Uh, they're going to be holding uh, vigils and actions in, right across the country in Vancouver, Toronto, Calgary, Winnipeg, Hamilton, Ottawa, Montreal, and I'm sure elsewhere, uh, a National Day of Action. I want to invite you to attend. It's June 18th. That's Monday uh, at 1 p.m. Monday, June 18th at 1 p.m. And the one in Toronto is going to be happening at the Toronto Regional Office of Citizenship and Immigration Canada, which is located at 25 St. Clair Avenue East. Uh, uh, there is a website, www doctorsforrefugeecare.ca and that'll be up on the screen for you to visit but uh, please join me at that rally uh, and as we join with people right across the country to demand that um, the government stop the attacks on refugees and immigrants uh, that the government understand and, and that um, when people come to this country when they are resident in this country they are protected under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and they are, pro uh, they are protected and have the same rights as uh, other Canadians who've been here for a long time. So uh, please do join them. That's Monday, June 18th, 1 p.m. Uh, at 25 St. Clair Avenue East, uh, just east of Young Street. And I'll see you there. Um, and I also want to tell you, we've had some real wonderful gains in the uh, queer and trans community uh, in the recent past. Uh, just the other day in Ontario, Toby's Law 
uh, was passed. This this brings gender expression and gender identity under, uh, it includes it as a prohibited ground of discrimination under the Ontario Human Rights Act. That's so important. Uh, really uh, a testament to the long, long fight by um, trans activists in this city, um, as well as to Sherry, De and in this province, as well as to Sherry DeNovo, the MPP who's pushed forward that legislation. Um, that also we saw that followed shortly after by the province of Manitoba doing the same thing. So this is really wonderful. Our federal government has not shown any leadership on this. Uh, when the subject of trans rights comes up in the federal government, you hear the conservatives laughing and, um, and uh, making terrible jokes uh, and uh, bringing up terrible fears about trans people. But Fortunately, the provinces are taking the lead, and Northwest Territories, I should add, which was the first jurisdiction in Canada to enshrine trans uh, and gender expression rights in, uh, in their human rights code. Anyways, we've still got a long way to go. And one of the things that's coming up is Pride, of course. And um, uh, Pride, while it's a wonderful celebration, of course, brings people from all over the world to our city uh, and is really, really important for queer and trans visibility, particularly, I think, uh, for people from small towns where, and uh, parts of Toronto where it's not as easy to be out uh, and proud as it is uh, in downtown Toronto. Uh, so, of course, Pride is a wonderful celebration. But over the years, we've also seen Pride uh, move to be more and more corporate, uh, more and more about banks and uh, booze companies and uh, police forces and other institutions and corporations that really um, see uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and trans visibility more as about selling products uh, or finding a market or burnishing their own image, you know, playing up their own image, uh, despite the fact that, uh, in fact, they uh, are not champions of queer and trans rights. And so lots of people, as you know, have been fighting back against that, have been trying to keep the politics in pride, uh, particularly uh, the group uh, Queers Against uh, Israeli Apartheid, uh, the Coalition for Free Speech that came up in the last couple of years. So I want to let you know um, that there is another coalition that has formed this year to try to keep those politics in pride, protect the rights of groups like Kwaya and other political groups uh, to have a presence in pride, <coughs> resist the efforts of banks and uh, politicians and, um, and uh, other kinds of uh, 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 straight people <laughs> in newspapers um, from telling us what queer pride is all about. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm sick of uh, a newspaper columnist or a, a bank president or a um, you know, a group that uh, purports to support Israel um, telling me what it means to be queer and what it means to, um, to be pr out and proud. Uh, my queerness is about my whole identity, and that includes my identity as an activist, it includes my identity as a, a, a woman, it includes my identity as an anti as a police accountability activist, and those are and as well as a Palestinian rights activist. And I'm going to bring that all to pride: anti-poverty, uh, anti-globalization, or certainly a criticism of globalization, and all the rest. So we got to be able to keep expressing ourselves at pride, and and also recognize that pride is huge. It's a week long now, even more, uh, and there are lots of opportunities to bring the politics to pride. So, Queers for Social Justice has just formed. It's a coalition of queer community groups, organizations, and causes. Uh, the group was formed at a community town hall meeting for queers on May 27th and have come together to bring a unified message of social justice and politics to Pride 2012. Que you can find Queers for Social Justice on Facebook. Just plug in Queers for Social Justice and you will find them. And um, they're going to create spaces for politics at Pride this year and have the voices heard. Uh, their goal is to celebrate, demonstrate, and agitate. And yes, it is possible to do all of those things uh, during Pride celebrations. So. They're organizing a whole bunch of events, including die-ins, one for June 28th, uh, one, uh, I believe, uh, after the Dyke March or during the Dyke March, uh, and another one at the flag raising. They're also looking at um, doing a night march, uh, which will focus on the politics of pride, promise, no corporations involved. That's going to be on June 25th. Uh, in the evening, I believe starting from City Hall, although make sure to uh, uh, check Facebook 
for all of the details. But I want to let you know that if there are some of you who are, uh, have experience or would like to get to know what it means to marshal uh, a march like this, and by marshaling we mean uh, just providing guidelines on the side, making sure people are safe, making sure that the cars stay out and the haters stay out and the lovers and the activists stay in, um, I would like to encourage you to attend a marshal training coming up on Wednesday, June 20th. That's going to be at the 519 Church Street Community Center in room 304, and it's happening from 5.30 till 7 p.m. And, um, you know, uh, these night marches, these actions, these demonstrations that we take, like Take Back the Night, uh, like the uh, Casarole that are happening every Wednesday night from Dufferin Grove Park, um, and like this night march for Pride, this Pride night march, um, these all uh, take place only because of volunteers and the wonderful people who are uh, really behind the scenes and really enabling this to happen. So I really encourage you to get out to the Marshall Training on June 20th, uh, 530 to 7 p.m., room 304 at the 519 Church Street Community Centre, where you'll be able to... Um, uh, help out the organizers. They don't know exactly how many people could, uh, will show up at this march. Uh, could be hundreds, could be thousands. So would really like to see you out there at the Marshall Training, uh, helping them to make sure that it is a safe march where everyone is able to celebrate, demonstrate, agitate, uh, and uh, bring those politics back to pride. Thanks a lot. Take care.